Hi everyone! So today we're gonna talk about flight attendants in Dubai. You know pretty much from the title of this video what's the subject gonna be about. And this video today is gonna be in English. Some content is made in Greek, my mother tongue, and some content is made in English. And it depends on the video because if I feel like this video is gonna benefit more people because I know that Emirates is an international company, people from all over the world want to, to work for Emirates, it's a very appealing job for young people. So I feel like in English it's much more beneficial for many people. And so we're gonna talk in English today. I have some more videos in English about uh, Dubai, like about my house in Dubai, um, about like having a dog in Dubai. So you can scroll to my channel, my YouTube channel, to see some videos that you might be interested to. And let's start. So some of you may already know that uh, I was working in a Greek airline company, uh, Aegean Airlines. And since I made a video about this company, a lot of people were asking me, so now you're in Dubai, you're in another company, maybe you can do a comparison about these two. So this day has come. I'm not gonna do a comparison, but now that I left Emirates finally as well, uh, I can talk about why I left and maybe, maybe some comparison, little one, is gonna come at the end of this video. Um, so now the first question that I get is um, why you left this job, right? You're traveling the world, you're still young, etc. For many people, not only for me, from my colleagues as well that we were discussing on the flights, it's a fun job to do, but a lot of us, we don't see it as a career, as a job that we want to grow old into it. And there are some people that they do because these people really like the job. And if you are one of these people that you don't get tired and that you like it and that you want to grow old and still do this job, I feel so happy for you because that's the purpose of life, to feel happy in something that you do. But if you feel like, ah, it's okay now that I'm young, but I don't know how it's gonna be later on, I'm gonna struggle, blah, blah, blah then it's not for you and you need to find something else. Well, that's my case at least, because I always wanted to do something on my studies. Um, I studied economics and I always wanted to work on economics and business. And I became a flight attendant. How? I was applying when I graduated from my bachelor degree in Greece. So I was applying in multinational companies. And I was applying to any single position, like even call center, you know, you're just 22, you want to start working in a big company and you feel like later on you can um, grow in this company and progress and have a better position. So that's what uh, I did. So I was applying and then Aegean Airlines called me for the flight attendant role because my age was perfect. I was just 22, I was young and they called me, I thought a little bit about it. I went, I did it. It was not for me uh, because it was pretty much like an office job, but on a plane. We didn't have any layovers. Layovers meaning sleeping on destinations in hotels. Um, with Emirates, you really you sleep out of your bed. You know what I mean? Like you sleep in hotels, you, you get to, to explore some corners around the world. It's not really traveling, I'm gonna go later into it. It's not really traveling, it's like exploring some corners of the world with Emirates. But back in Greece, it was, I feel in many domestic airlines, that's the case. You just, your office is the plane and then you sleep on your bed and you have your family and kids and it goes like that. So for me, it was a no-no. If I do an office job, I want it to be on my studies. If I'm a cabin crew, I want to travel. Then I did it for seven, eight months, I think, like my, my first contract. And then I studied again, and then I went to an open day. And like, like that, I just, something clicked. And I said, if I'm gonna do this job and say that I don't like it, I need to do it right. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do it right. I wanted to do the actual job. 
and Dubai and Emirates was a very good option to do that. I mean, to travel and stuff. We came to Dubai, Dubai is amazing. The first year that you're gonna start traveling, it's gonna be the best year of your life. At least that was my case. You're exploring so many corners of the world and still you have your friends in Dubai. When you come and you are in the training college, you make a lot of friends. And then when you come from the, from abroad, from the layovers, you come to Dubai, the fr your friends always want to go out, have a good time. And then you have a good time in Dubai, you have a good time abroad. Usually, usually in most cases, the first year is the best, best year ever. But what happens after that, right? After that, the destinations are repeating all the time on your schedule. And then you get the same stuff all over again. And usually the hotels are airport hotels. So you're like, okay, I'm gonna go to Paris. But again, Paris, Paris is something that Emirates flight attendants hate. The hotel is in the airport. The flight is always busy. You need to, to make an effort to, to have fun in Paris because you need to take the metro or you need to splurge and take the taxi. And um, anyways, so the destinations are repeating. And then after some years, you feel like uh, you became, you become stagnant. Like you stay on the same, on the same line, you go to the same destinations and you don't feel happy. And at least that's what happened with me. Like after the first year, I felt like, okay, from the beginning, I knew that this is not my forever job. Now I'm not traveling. So long story short, if it's not your forever job after your first two years, you need to go to your plan A, I would say, like your initial plan, like your, your forever job, like to work on your career. It's okay to have fun and it's okay to try different stuff. And for me, if I didn't try it, I would always be like, you know, I knew, I knew I could do that, but I'm just now in an office with all of these people that I don't like. I would complain, I know myself. But now that I did that and I know how it is and I did it, I had fun at the beginning, then it get, got a little bit boring. So now I can be happy with my routine and I can be happy with the routine I'm building and with the career I'm building, with the family I'm building, the home I'm building. So first we said, not a forever job for many people. Second, not much room for upgrades. Um, your upgrades, they go by staff numbers. So the company, because it's a huge company, they, they really treat you as a number. Like there is not really um, a personal relationship with your manager. It's very hard, hard to build because the managers are so busy. So you're basically treated as a number. You, you have a staff number. You get your upgrade related to your staff number. There is a priority and that's how everything works. Your leaves are by staff number. Your um, applications for many things are by staff number. Of course, your performance matters. But most of the time, like what I saw from my friends, even if you have a million of compliments from passengers, even though you will get promoted to business class and later on to first class or whatever, only if your staff number is a specific number that now it's the time for promotion. So you get promoted with people that they have zero compliments and you have 1000 compliments, they have zero, you still get promoted together. And I don't know if it's fair or not, but that's how it is. So for us, we signed for three years in economy class. So we knew that already we're going to be three years in economy class. We knew that only if like business picks up, you're going to get a bit faster. But COVID happened. Guess what? <laughs> it got delayed a lot. Like it got delayed for years, for years and a half. This can happen before COVID. Also, there was a recession some years back, uh, like two years before I joined, one year before I joined. I was in Emirates for four years. Exactly little bit less, no, four, four years, three years and 11 months. Uh, so before I joined in um, 2017, I think they stopped recruiting as well because of some issues, recession, I don't know. And people, they stayed long time. And if you stay long time, 
especially if you stay a long time in a specific cabin, let's say you stay in a long time, even in business class, then it gets so boring. So yeah, even if you want to become something else in Emirates, if you think that you're gonna go to Emirates, let's say I like economics, right? I like finance. If I think that I'm gonna get recruited as a flight attendant and later on, I'm gonna get promoted to an office position in marketing, business or economics, this might never happen. First, because Emirates, they train you for the cabin. They spend a lot of money on you to have the license to be able to operate as a cabin crew. So every single year to renew your license, every single year on the training, they spend money. They have a lot of needs in the cabin because you're the first people on the first line. You're the representative of the company. People, a uh, company has needs in the cabin. So it's very, very hard to get promoted to an office position. Um, and also like to get promoted in an office position because it happened. I'm not saying that it never happened. I know some girls that they got the office jobs uh, in Emirates after being cabin crew. It's me, see? <laughs> so it's my baby. And I know some girls, yeah, but uh, they stayed a long time in, in Emirates. Like I think they were business class crew around seven years in Emirates. So you have to wait a little bit. You have to keep that in mind. Also, what happened during COVID in 2020 shocked me so much because Emirates in 2020 fired almost half of their cabin crew. Everybody panicked. Everybody thought, okay, so this job is nothing like you you go out of here and they can get rid of you like that like many companies did let's not uh, let's not point fingers on emirates many companies did but with emirates let's say you spend your whole life working in emirates right and then you get rid like that and you are 40 years old and all you've done in your life is a cabin crew job so you didn't develop many skills to continue but if you have a career like if you have a career in finance and um, I don't know if you are a doctor and your company wants to, your clinic wants to let you go or your company lets you go, then you have some skills on your resume that you can use and you can find another job because you're still building your career. But with cabin crew, you're 40 and then they let you go. Well, it's very hard to find something in in uh, hospitality it's very hard especially if you're old so this really clicked something in my mind and i thought okay so now it's the time i need to really really think about the plan i need to develop some skills i need to pick up what i studied in the past to pick it up to do some courses to level up my skills a bit and find something else because here it's not forever like as i said before and also i want to say something i forgot that Usually in Emirates, flight attendants, what we say, if we see um, a purser, purser is the highest position of a cabin crew on the plane. So the purser usually is with Emirates for 14 years. There are some pursers that they've been with Emirates for 20 years. And when they share it with us, we are all like, oh my God, okay. So for sure he or she has some issues. Because flying like this for so many years, most of them, okay, not all of them. I don't want to to talk as a as a whole here. I don't want to do that. There are there are many different people that can deal with this differently. But some people that they've been with Emirates for a long time, they had they have many issues. Like they have many psychological issues. Um, that's why they say that, that a lot of flight attendants, they have depression, they suffer from depression because of the lifestyle. And this is true. And this is what I want to share with you. Like the actual lifestyle is a little bit depressing. And after your first year, if you continue with sleeping like this, with a lifestyle like that, you're gonna get a little bit depressed. You're gonna get, you're gonna dwell in this miserable, vanity that the job has and um, yeah so like that's what we secretly discuss we young people in economy class uh, that okay she's she's here 20 years so she has some issues don't uh, don't uh, leave her alone right like uh, try to avoid her try to avoid her yeah that, that's what we do usually when we see people being with emirates for a long time
Okay, and now let's uh, go to the lifestyle that I said before. Lifestyle of a cabin crew is tough. There are many people saying, no, it's not because it's very like family friendly job. Cabin crew is a job for moms because imagine, some people say that, like imagine you have an office job, right? In Dubai, and then you uh, finish your job around six and then your babies have to sleep around eight. So you don't really spend a lot of time with them and you're tired, but if you are a cabin crew, you have during the week some days off, like usually you have a flight, two days off, flight, one day off, or some fl sometimes you fly consecutively, but you get to have some days off. Um, so you, they say that you can really like take your kids to school on these weekdays that you're off, uh, etc. I don't agree. I don't think that it's a, a family friendly job or a mother friendly job. Do you hear that? I think someone is moving next door today, but I wanted to do this video, but it's okay, we're gonna, we're gonna manage. So what I was saying is that um, this job, the sleeping patterns are crazy. So if you're a mom, you really, really have to, to take good care of your sleep to be able to face all of that. And I think that on your days off, you will be so tired. Come on, I was 24 and I was exhausted. I was smashed. I couldn't walk sometimes after flying consecutively. So if you're a mom, you need a lot of motivation to step out of bed, to take care of your kids, to be able to play with them. I think it's exhausting in general, but uh, yeah. So I gave you like both sides about the mother friendly job or not. But generally speaking, like the, the sleeping patterns are crazy in Emirates. You know, there are sometimes that the departure is at midnight and sometimes that the departure is around 5 a.m. So basically you can land tonight, midnight, and then you can fly after 24 hours. No, you can fly actually after 16 hours in Dubai. But let's say this is not very often, but then you get to fly after 27 hours and you fly in the morning, you know, you fly around 5 a.m. And that's crazy because you cannot really get a good rest. Your, our body is built like that, that needs routine. If you see like on, if you have a leave for many days, now if you're a cabin crew, for example, for me, if I had the leave for one week, my body was getting used to it and was enjoying so much waking up every single day on the same time without alarm. So our body is like a clock. It needs that. So disturbing the sleep like that, and there is a circle, a cycle circle that is the Circadian circle of sleeping that if you interrupt a lot it can lead to heart problems okay i'm not a specialist here i'm just saying that it can be it can lead to to different problems mental health problems a lot that's why a lot of people have them that's amazing of emirates having teams handling with uh, people with depression uh, we have a line uh, that we can always call and say uh, like we have this problem i feel depressed lately and there's always someone there to talk to you um, and we knew that since the first day that we joined so they are telling you that maybe you're gonna face some issues but we are here that's very nice of them sleeping patterns we said messed up your diet is gonna get messed up you're gonna eat your food because you maybe maybe you're waking up around 11 p.m. because you have a flight at 1 a.m. so you you get to eat breakfast and coffee and then you know it it gets like that like you get crazy <laughs> you get crazy the first year if you're young you don't mind especially if you are able to sleep easily amazing you're gonna you you're gonna do great the first year I'm telling you uh then if you fly a lot again another thing is that you're gonna meet a lot of people passengers that they're traveling much more than you <laughs> and you're gonna get upset but i'm telling you there are people that they're building their careers 
and they get to travel so much. They are gold members, platinum mem members with, uh, with Emirates and you see that they fly more than us really and they still have decent lives like they, they're building their career, they're having their life, they're managing their life and they get to fly and they get to travel around and they make a lot of money. So then you get to think a little bit, what am I doing here? That's what I was thinking, like, what am I doing? And now really, like, I'm trying to talk to you like my friends. I was thinking, what am I doing? I, I'm, I'm traveling with people I don't know, because your colleagues you don't know. Every single day on the flight, you meet a new team. Every single day you're flying with people you don't know. And you're like, okay, so I'm traveling with people I don't know. Most probably with people that we don't really fit together. Sometimes with people you really don't like, right? Or sometimes you make amazing friends and that's great. And that's the, the magic of this job. But let's say if you don't fly with nice crew and a lot of times you're not, not gonna fly with nice crew, I'm telling you, that's, that's how it is, right? Because people are grumpy and they're like, oh, I didn't want to get, uh, I didn't want to come to this flight, you know, I was tired, I wanted to go out in Dubai, my friend has birthday, like many of this is, are going to happen and people are getting grumpy and then you have to deal with it. And then you're traveling around the world with people that you don't really match. And then you stay in the destinations for a little while, like for 24 hours, if you're lucky, 48 hours, amazing. And then you, you are at the airport and then you're exhausted, but you still need to make an effort to go out. And then you go out, you manage to go out with these people because they convinced you that you're going to have fun. And you go out with them and you spend money and you make the effort to, to go out even though you want to take a shower and sleep. And then you go out and you're a walking zombie. That's my travels with Emirates. I was a walking zombie. Flights usually are long, right? They are, the flights are like, um, let's say you do a flight to Europe, okay? Seven hours, six hours, seven hours. Meaning you came to work two hours before that. So you woke up, we, we, checked, we check in usually two hours before the departure time. Meaning you woke up before, maybe you wanted to make your suitcase, you have to do your makeup maybe two hours before the, the checking time. Uh, you have to make your way to the airport as well. So yeah, two times. So four time, four hours before departure time, you woke up if you managed to sleep before. And then six, six hours the flight. So this is already 10 hours. 10 hours you're awake and you're awake on a plane that you worked and you work hard on the plane. And then it's been 10 hours, you land, and because you know when you fly, your immunity gets down, you get really tired. So it's tiring in general. And then let's go back to what I was saying. You are tired, you wanted to sleep, you didn't sleep because you want to go out with the people. You want to explore the city because next day maybe nobody wants to go out and you don't wanna go by yourself. So you land, maybe you had a coffee, and then if you have a coffee after two hours usually, you really want to sleep, especially if you're tired. <laughs> That's what was happening to me. So I wanted to die whenever I was. Like I wanted to close my eyes and sleep for 15 hours minimum. And um, yeah, so you're basically like a walking zombie, trying to see stuff, trying to be happy, trying to, to, to live as much as possible, even though you are exhausted. And let's face it, when you are so sleepy, when you're so exhausted, you have this, this on the brain, they say it triggers some hormones that you get the same feeling as if you're drunk. So if you're exhausted, sleepless and stuff, you feel like you're drunk. And I was feeling like that all the time even though I don't drink. So I had this brain fog. I wanted to take as much pictures as I, I could and I want to enjoy and enjoy the food and stuff. But really you're a walking zombie. So you have to take care of yourself. You have to sleep well. 
and you have to eat well and drink a lot of water but still you're gonna face this stuff because sleep is important our body needs to rest even if you do even if you have the best diet one girl told me actually before i resigned like what is this job she was uh, she was a bit aggressive like uh, funny funny aggressive what is this job girls come and they tell me oh yeah i have a healthy life um i eat only greens i'm a vegan she's like with this life you're not sleeping better you eat mcdonald's than not sleeping so you're basically like eating mcdonald's because you never sleep at night so you you have um a bad lifestyle from not sleeping properly now one more downside of emirates is the staff travel tickets um so what i faced before i resigned a little bit on that uh, summer because after covid on uh, beginning of 2022 flights pick up everybody wanted to travel because people stayed at home too much and then emirates limited the travel tickets for us so I wanted to go home during summer and I couldn't book for Greece the staff travel ticket. I had to pay a lot more. And I remember actually I couldn't find even with a 50% discount and Emirates is, a, is an expensive company as well. So even with 50%, we didn't have any option to book. Then I remember I asked from a friend who is a gold member with Emirates because he has a cool job and he flies a lot. And he booked for me because he paid some of his miles and he booked for me very cheap so i was like okay i'm doing this job i'm a cabin crew i do it for the tickets and for traveling and i'm asking other people to book for me that they don't even work for emirates Bravo. amazing <laughs> yeah this is a little bit of a downside also some uh, domestic company some european companies um they they give staff travel tickets easily and even if the flight is overbooked they give you jumpsuit or they take you in the flight deck. Emirates, they don't do that. Uh, I think they do it for like safety reasons, especially the flight deck. They don't allow anyone in the flight deck. So that's okay. That's uh, understandable. Okay. But uh, jumpsuit or CRC, the rest compartment, I don't know. Maybe they could use that. Other companies do it. Emirates, they don't do it. And now let's go to some good stuff about Emirates because as you notice, um, as I said, uh, I'm still in Dubai. I don't know if I said it, maybe I did. So I'm still in Dubai. And one good thing about Emirates is that you get to live in Dubai. Now, some people don't like Dubai, some people love it. I love it. Um, it has the good and the bad, but I keep the good because the good are so good that they made me stay and a lot of people that they complain about Dubai and a lot of people that they used to be cabin crew then they let them go during COVID and they stayed in Dubai and they used to complain about Dubai so they had the chance to go home but they stayed so this says something about the city so this city is very nice you have a lot of potential you have potential to grow your career you have potential to do anything that you like there are so many choices I stayed so with Emirates you get to stay in Dubai and the accommodation is paid and um, that, that's a good thing about it. So overall, um, Emirates is a nice company. It's a multinational company. If you like hospitality, if you like the job, you're blessed. I'm happy for you. And definitely my experience with Emirates is a much better experience than the experience I had with the Greek airline that I was working. So like to compare, uh, Emirates was an eight and a half and that one was a three. So you see like a big difference. I gave you an overall image of why I left and what to expect a little bit from the job and hope to see you in another video. If you want me to make more videos in English or more videos about Dubai, please let me know your um, suggestions in the comments down below. And you can click on the bell because I don't have a specific date that I'm uploading because I'm working now, I have a nine to five job. So to get the notification that I uploaded a video, you can just click on the bell button. And I hope to see you on my next video. Bye.